it's about kind of learning about local history um, in a way that centers the oral history and the, the stories of everyday people. Um, so I, I could talk more about kind of what we've done in the past because we've done some really beautiful and exciting murals, but I want to tell you that this mural will be at Clairview LRT station. And so an area like that, when we're speaking about this many communities, the natural solution for me, it's too long and wide to show people um, just because of the proportions of it. So it felt to me like if we created a tapestry of all these different fabrics from different communities and kind of wove them together visually in the mural, it would be a good fit. It almost creates a banner above the entrance to the Clairview uh, train station. Yeah. So will the mural, um, let me say, like when you're talking about the textiles and tapestries, mm -hmm. is that is it just going to be a visual of textiles and tapestries on its own, or is there going to be like... I'm just try I'm trying, yeah, to yeah, trying to visualize yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a good question. So uh, this part of the process is really us figuring that out. Yeah. So the basic concept is to create something that looks and feels like a woven material of some kind. Mm -hmm. um, likely a series of woven materials, maybe of different uh, fabrics. Yeah. Uh, and finding out what those fabrics are and how exactly visually we weave them together. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still at the early part of that process. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of physically how the mural would be applied, it's all going to be paint and it will be painted directly to the walls. So it won't actually be the fabrics themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take a close look at um, the way those fabrics are made and then how they look from far back and then imitate that with paint. Um, so really it's based on pattern and texture yeah. um, and then replicating that visually with paint. A, a visit to the textile museum and we found out that there are so many different types of textiles. So some textiles actually have imagery depicted within them. So they're um, almost like cartoons or stylized version of characters um, sewn into the textiles. So there's a more literal ability to tell a story in some textiles. Other textiles tell the story just through the pattern or the way that they were made. So batik, for example, the, the way that that fabric is made, the production of it, um, that alone tells its own story. Um, other, I see the cloth over there that has a depiction of some elephants on it. There's also some abstract flower patterns. Um, so there's kind of a combination of things. Um, so I think we'll... My gut says that we'll see a variety of those. So some very literal pieces of fabric that has a, a story depicted, and then some other ones, like uh, one example we saw at the U of A was a tartan made for Alberta. And so they use these specific colors that relate to the history of Alberta, but it's made in the tartan tradition. So I mean, it's got that um, plaid pattern to it. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, that's not one we're gonna use for this mm -hmm. because those aren't the communities we're speaking to about this yeah. one. But that's kind of an example of, um, uh, the way that the textile is made and why it was made combining to tell a new story and so I think that's the level of depth that we're trying to look for here. So. ourselves here partly but then in 1977 we had to go back to Sri Lanka uh, and I was teaching at the university there and after the 83 troubles that we had we decided to migrate we had no problems uh, coming to Canada just as a side thing uh, looking at that Sri Lankan flag uh, I, let me tell you something about this flag the red represents, the red uh, on the background of the lion represents the Sinhalese community in Sri Lanka. The yellow is the color for the, uh, the, the primary religion in Sri Lanka, which is Buddhism. And those two stripes there, the green and the orange, represent the Muslims, because their color is green, and the Tamils, their color is orange. So. All the communities are interwoven into that flag. A lot of people don't realize it, but that was founded on that principle. Unfortunately, we have deviated from what our flag depicts. We're coming back to Canada. But 
and we had to also cut through so many barriers. Um, in 83, uh, in 84, when I came back here, it was awfully difficult to get a job here. So those are some of the highlights, plus uh, even through our church, we do, uh, as Sri Lankans, we do um, community work, and uh, we try to give back by helping, we have, uh, by helping many who have come in here to establish themselves, and if there is any concern, any problem, uh, we are there to give that support. You can see they have different colors because we have. Wow. Now these are easy to do because yeah. there are only two colors. Eh? Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Or simply two and a half maybe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Over the cracks. But if you have more colors, then it's more elaborate because you have to wax, boil off the wax. Wax again, boil off the wax with another color. Right. You have to dye it so many times. Yeah, and it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. And they uh, color all this and they keep the red open. Okay? Then they close the red, then put the yellow. It's like that, how the batik is done. Okay, so the more colors in a batik, yeah. it's more expensive and intricate. And intricate, okay. Yeah, so that's awesome. what happens. And is the uh, images, are the images in this um, important? Is the elephant or? Yeah, the elephant is a yeah. special flower too, yeah. the flower important? Yeah, flower, the, it's all you see. Uh, we would bal we don't just draw flowers if you see. It's half and you know, half, like, you know, see? Like, you know, it's symmetry. Mm, okay, yeah. And uh, is this a specific symbol or just an extra decoration? Actual decoration, yeah, just yeah, a, yeah. like a, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But the flower is kind of, and these are like, you know, this comes from the, this and the, uh, these are like, uh, what do you call it? In columns we have this, you know, like that, you know. These in are which, in the columns? Like, uh, uh, Celia said, like morals, whatever we do, like these type of things we would put, you know. To, uh, like in, it's part of the architecture. Uh, the, yeah. the architecture uh, uh, how the Greeks had the, the columns uh, 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 ornaments uh, uh, in the uh, top. Uh, they also uh, have uh, and then the mango. Okay.